Welcome to Something to Talk About. Here we are at King's Restaurant. You know, it is the Lenten season, so so far in the Lenten season, I have been, I have actually fallen in love with this. It's it's salmon, it's grilled salmon with like this curry sauce over rice. It is just ridiculous. But I am uh, here with Kai Merle. He's got his fried rice all right? With yeah, actually, sausage. I was about to say, I, you I chose an interesting uh, uh, pick for Lent. I, instead of giving up fish or chocolate or candy yeah. or anything like that, I actually gave up straws. Straws. Well, that's an easy one because we were just that's about the it. movement. That's the yep. movement. No straws. It's the yep. I call it the utensil non grata. That it nobody recognizes. I know. It should be easy. But, but Kai no. Merle is here. He's one of the I want to call him up and coming because I think that in the scope of things and and considering your age, you are very much up and coming. You're making you. a dent. Um, I remember one of the one of the innovative ideas that has come from your brain was when you were uh, going for your Eagle Scout and you oh, yeah. created this template that was placed on the ground to help tourists in countries that drive on the opposite side of the road yep. know that they have to look toward the right and the left in order right. to cross the road and not get hit. And so that was his Eagle Star, a, a Scout project and the template was placed on the sidewalk or on the ground, on the road, or on the sidewalk? Which on the sidewalk. It? On the on sidewalk, sidewalk before the crosswalk. To call the, yeah, so yeah. I thought that was a, a pretty cool idea, and, and and that was, I thought, innovative and helpful to the public. But So first of all, because I've known him since he was a little boy, time. but and so much time has, has, has gone by. First of all, let's tell everybody who you are. Uh, well, my name is Kai Morell. Uh, I'm the founder of Shorty Swimwear, and I'm the head project manager at Azuda Foundation. Uh, I grew up on Guam, born in Hawaii. I'm 23 years old. Uh, I went to FD, part of the uh, Friar Nation. Um, Tell them who your mom and dad is, boy. Oh yeah, my mom <laughs> and dad are Julie and Dan Morell, uh, and we they work with Triple J, uh, our family business, uh, and. And so he's a good local boy. Um, yeah. You said, yeah. first of all, local you said. Local by was what I like to say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you, white we, sauce in my fin and Denny. <laughs> I'm the least brown, the most down. That's oh my I'm God, there's a, there's a slogan. But you, so you were born in Hawaii. Let's talk about the mm -hmm. story of, of how you came to be Kai Merle and the, uh, okay. and the Jones family. Okay. The uh, Merle Jones family, that is. I was, uh, um, Adopted when I was born uh, out of Tripler Hospital in Hawaii uh, uh, by this unsuspecting couple uh, <laughs> that I had no idea what they were in for. Uh, and they brought me to Guam. They were just passing through Hawaii and happened to fill out an application with the right people. And uh, it just so worked out that when they got to their destination, they got a call saying there was somebody that chose them. And uh, it was the biggest blessing of my life was uh, that first decision before I was ever even born. Uh, probably the biggest moment of my pre-existence as well. Well, I mean, yeah. second most important. <laughs> but uh, that decision of choosing these parents is really what set me up for everything that I'm doing now. Uh, my parents taught me everything. Like everyone says, they're your first teachers and I wouldn't be a quarter of the man I was today, if it wasn't for them. Yeah. So I owe them everything, and uh, the Jones family that uh, adopted me, it wasn't only a, uh, um, uh, only my parents, it was a whole family effort, you know, they say it takes a village to mm -hmm. raise a child. Uh, it definitely took all of Baragod, I'm sure a bunch <laughs> of uh, my friends down at Agate can attest that it took most of their village too to keep me under wraps. So they got well, just about. <laughs> this is this is where you know you, you you have a very creative mind and you're always searching to do something, but yep. most importantly, and much like your family, most importantly, trying to find projects that benefit the entire community. Right. And I, it's easy for a young man such as yourself to be born into a prominent family, to go off the rails and so you know and and just sort of abuse the privileges, but that's not. That's not the kind of family that you were raised in, and you no, have to sort of hold your own in your in the community. So oh, most definitely, they were a uh, uh, learn by grit kind of family. No uh, handouts are few and far between. They made me work and learn work ethic. Uh, my entire upbringing, it was uh, uh, 
I wanted new shoes, I gotta go wash cars, you know? Mm -hmm. I wanna take a girl to the movies, gotta go wash cars. Yeah. And it started when I was uh, not, uh, I don't think I was supposed to say. But, uh, okay, don't say it then. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I see what you say. Okay, don't do yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I started at a young age. You started. Uh, well, I mean, all, mo mo it just happens to be that you had a family business that does things like this. So right. it's all training. It's and not like you're it on the payroll. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like uh, I was an employee of Triple J. It was, yeah. it was uh, uh, I would go in kind of finagle 50 bucks out of my grandpa <laughs> here or there for... Well, you were doing work. what normal boys would do at, right, the, at, right. at that age. Mom <laughs> says no to the shoes. I'll go check Grandpa and yeah. oh, he'll make I, me work for it, but I'll get the shoes. Everybody <laughs> work the magic. Everybody yeah. work the magic and yeah. you learn how to do it. There's nothing Thank wrong you. with that. The, the, the interesting thing is that now that you are in your 20s, you have gone back to research mm -hmm. some of the your, your pre-moral life, yeah. right? And yeah. You, you have an incredible story about finding people from your life that connects I do. you. I'm extremely blessed in so many ways. Uh, one of my biggest blessings recently was being able to reconnect. Ooh, I'm getting, oh, getting really? chills, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I was able to reconnect with my birth family after 22 years, I believe, uh, of not knowing and having questions as every adopted or foster or uh, a child with that doesn't have both parents like we all have questions uh, and I went 22 years without ever having any answers and uh, I was about to make a huge significant change in my life uh, for the better and I didn't want any of the questions that I felt were a hindrance to me uh, to keep weighing me down uh, with all this this positive stuff that I have moving forward I wanted to get all the questions out of my head all of the uh, the issues that I might have had uh, out and cleared or got to solve the problems or at least change the questions you know I'm yeah. tired of asking myself the same questions let's get to a deeper question or get to an answer yeah. uh, and I was just ready for it and like I said I'm so blessed and a big part of that was the fact that I didn't rush the process uh, well, oh, so many, so, so many. It took some time to get to the, to the, to, I mean, it, it took the research to find. Right, like find I. Find your family was. Oh, okay, choked up a little I'm bit. Sorry. I have, no, no, not at all. It's uh, with happiness. Like, I don't know what it was in the cosmic universe of things that gave me such an amazing opportunity and had the people that acted the way they did, acting the way that they did, I have no idea why that worked so perfectly for me, but it did, and I'm trying to make the most of it and trying to uh, share those blessings with everybody else, which is why I really thank you for letting me tell this story, because it's actually a story I believe a lot of kids uh, need to hear, because for a long time, uh, when I was younger, looking at it, I was always mad or I was always hurt by uh, the concept of my birth mother giving me up, mm -hmm. or uh, uh, and it's a really down was, to your core like kind a, of issue. Like a rejection, you felt more yeah, like a rejection. Yeah, it, it okay. was. Do so you it, question why? Yeah, it was. Uh, uh, it's a very, very, very deep rooted issue uh, in my adolescent mind for very, very many years, way more years than I'd like to admit now. Unfortunately, I had the thought in my mind that she was the first person ever that was supposed to love me, and instead she chose to give me up, which was very hard for me growing up. And uh, it led to a lot of other issues, and it, it still has some remaining uh, scars and stuff like that, that uh, that are still uh, that still hurt me to this day, but you, I when, moved when, past it. When the un when the cosmic universe sort of came together, did you finally have a chance to to talk to her? I and did. Ask her those. I questions? did. So uh, this this la or last year's summer, uh, this yeah, so this last summer, uh, I finally found myself at a place of maturity where I could go into a meeting with her, not mad, not angry, not upset, uh, from a uh, thankful perspective. I realized that if she hadn't done what she did, 
I would have nowhere near the same opportunities to make the change that I need to make in this lifetime. She could have started by not giving me up and I would have never had the amazing opportunity of meeting the Jones family. She could have claimed that it was the drugs or whatever that was affecting her brain when she chose that family and then came back and got me years after. Uh, she could have contacted me and told me when I was way too young to understand what was going on or what I really wanted to say or how I really felt that she was my birth mom and that she loved me and all of this stuff, which I needed to hear, but at the right time. And, and that's amazing that you say that there's a maturity. Listen, I want to well, I want to take a break so you can hack yeah. into that. Yeah, I want to take I, a break. I'm, and then when, when we come maybe back. That's, maybe that's why I'm getting emotional. I haven't oh, eaten some breakfast yet. Oh, when we come back, we'll, we're going to talk to Kai about where all of this cosmic energy and good fortune has brought him into a place of service uh, yep. to the community. And we'll talk about that here on Something to Talk About. Welcome back. Something to talk about. I'm here at King's Restaurant in Timooning uh, with, uh, well, he's like my, my nephew because he still calls me Auntie Patty from all of yep. the, from the first time that I met him. Kai Morales. Auntie Paddles, <laughs> Auntie Paddle Wag, <laughs> Auntie Paddle Doos. Oh my God. But Kai is, uh, Kai, Kai is making a, a splash in the community. I've noticed over the past few years or so, things that you've done. Um, I, I want to pick up, before we left uh, for the break, we, we talked about how your universe aligned that you were able to contact your mother. Right. And I think it's important, something that you said that I think is very helpful for kids who were going through that kind of identity crisis, is that the maturity, the time of your life yeah. when she reached out to you was the time you needed to fully understand because right. you been you were angry I was when you were angry, younger. And so. I was sad and I, it made me depressed for a lot of years, many years. Yeah. And uh, it, I needed to go into that conversation with a clear head mm. uh, I, I realized that that was for years me judging another person without ever knowing their situation without ever hearing from their lips an explanation or anything and I when I got older I realized that life's hard mm. and there's an inex inexplicable amount of things that she could have done other than choose than what she did and, and because option. of those decisions you've also forged new relationships right. with other blood so, relatives, like, right? Like I was saying, last summer, uh, I had the uh, blessing of going to Hawaii and uh, trying to track them down. Mm -hmm. Also, they gave us straws. Yeah. They don't do that anywhere else. They don't give straws anymore. That's the way, that, that's the way it is. But so, so you, 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 went, you went there to yeah, with the idea to track them down. Yep. Yeah. I was like, I got questions. I'm making a change in my life, a positive change in my life. And I don't want these questions to pull me down anymore. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to ask the questions and see where it gets me. And I'm not going to leave Hawaii until I get some kind of explanation. And uh, so I went and... Uh, I was able to get in contact with her. I knew she was uh, uh, worked with uh, a hair salon, so I kind of started looking around through there, and then I found her on Facebook, and we went through there, and uh, um, then I met her for the first time, and it was a crazy experience. She came up to our Airbnb, and uh, uh, just wild, wild experience. Uh, but basically, I just wanted to thank her for making the choice that she did. I'm, I'm not saying I had the easiest life in the world uh, with the family I had. They made me work hard. Um, but I know for a fact that I had the best family I could to prepare me for what I'm about to do. Yeah. Um, and so she also introduced you to right, somebody. Right, right. She uh, introduced me to a couple somebodies, actually. She, um, uh, my two little brothers uh, and with it was a huge shock to me i had no idea they even existed uh i didn't know i had any siblings really um and it was like this wow. huge Did you emotion guys click for right me. away uh yeah uh, well i have two brothers right. uh there's morgan and mccona uh and they mccona's 11 and 
he's very like the uh, the bad boy side of me, where he's just like. <laughs> oh, there was something you had in common with McConnell. There's a lot. Okay, okay. There's a lot. And then me Morgan's and older. Have in common. Morgan's older. She's 19, and actually, uh, well, yeah, he's 19, and he's more uh, laid back and calm and silent type. And he has very, very many things in common with me in terms of kind of my social uh, awkwardness. I'm not good with crowds, but I love talking to people one-on-one. -on -one. He's very much the same way uh, in terms of how he interacts with people and just kind of his aneurysms I see is weird. Wow. It's so you guys click right away and now Morgan lives here. Well, yeah, right, I flew him out. I was like, uh, I started talking to him about what he wanted to do and uh, uh, a lot of the stuff that he wanted to do where it fell perfectly in line with what I was already doing. Uh, and they, I was like, look man, I'm sorry I didn't get to know you for the first 22 years of my life, but I wanna change that. And I love what you were just telling me about. He had no idea what I do, by the way. Mm -hmm. and I was like, come to Guam. Trust me, come to Guam. Let's do something. You wanna do that? Let's do it. Come to Guam. I'm already doing it. And I started to tell him a little bit about the uh, businesses that I'm opening and stuff like that. And he loved it. Uh, so, which perfectly streamlines into what we're what are we going to talk about. Yeah. Because I am fashioning, by the way. There we go. This great invention. What is this? This, this is our shortest. He says he just showed me, he just gave me a wrist and he put a bracelet on. Yeah. Well, okay. you on the phone. I didn't want to interrupt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, uh, these are accessories. They are accessories that are meant to help kids access Zoris. So we're a completely eco-friendly company. Shorties from the foundation, we wanted to be uh, Guam's eco option for clothing, uh, uh, accessories, and we have a lot of other cool little trinkets and stuff like that coming out uh, that is meant to not only help the community uh, with its products, but help, or help the earth with its products, but help the community with its mission. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I wanted to build a company that I want to make eco-friendly fabrics and this idea of using recycled materials a norm. What is this made of? A must. Uh, so there comes with two string, two uh, bracelets in every one of our packages. Okay. Uh, the strings themselves are those black nets you see all over our beaches. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones people make hammocks out of. We we uh, there's a huge mountain down at port. Uh, we named it Shorty's Mountain, and we've been working on pulling the nets from there. We cut it, uh, hand clean it, hand tie it, uh, so every single one is different, hand cut here on Guam, and then we fasten it to our uh, uh, repurposed sea glass bead. Uh, oh, really? Yep, oh, cool. With our logo on it. Yeah. And uh, you're actually rocking our exclusive black ones. We're actually down to maybe like 13 pieces of this oh, now. Oh, really? And then it comes in this cool bag. Yeah. the bag. I love this bag. This is bag. the pouch. This is a little pouch that mm -hmm. it comes in. It's called Shorty Strings. Yep. So so when you when you buy this, where, where, are the, how did, how, where does this, the proceeds go to? So every time we sell one of our packages mm -hmm. that are actually a portable ashtray, our packages are smell proof and water resistant oh, cool. uh, portable ashtray to help keep cigarette buds off our beaches. Well then there's that. I, I you know I was thinking, wow that's interesting. Make it, it's to keep the butts off the beach. And packaging yeah. is always pollution. Yeah. And almost every form of product you mm -hmm. have, you use the product, throw away the package. Yeah. We wanted to create a package where it if you can't use users. it, you know somebody that smokes. That's true. And you know somebody that flicks their cigarettes out the window. That's true. Throw this in their car, fits in a cup holder, fits in a wallet, fits in your pocket. It won't smell. You could put up, like, I fit 30 cigarette buds in here. Well, you know, the, the fact that you have done this and in such a tender age as you are has also, also given... also recycled plastic. Oh, see, well, there's that. Is, is, is the fact that you were recognized recently by the Micronesian um, Conservation, Conservation Coalition yep, as, a, as a tide changer. I was. And I think you were like the or youngest. I was nominated. One. You're nominated, nominated right? Yeah. As a, but one of the one of the youngest too. Yep. And I lost very, very. Uh, well, I knew I was going to lose uh, <laughs> from the, the jump because of who else was nominated. Auntie Carr, uh, who's I work with every day or try to work with every day. She's a super busy lady mm -hmm. uh, over at the Azuda Foundation, which is what I do full time uh, during the day and night and morning. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but you, I mean, the fact that you were, clearly you were nominated, which is an honor itself. And it was. That, yeah, I, and, it and, was. And, and there were other people in the community that might have, uh, you know, been recognized for other work or longer time that they've worked. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you have been conscious, you know, of w the environment and mm -hmm. conscious of recycling and reusing and repurposing, I, I, I think is, is huge f because you have you know, you can be what they call an influencer. I totally forgot to tell you the whole point. Oh, okay, let's go with that. What happened? I'm so sorry. I will get right back to the influencer, yeah. but every time you buy one of our packages, we donate a pair of Zoris to children in need in our islands. Okay. That's the main reason. I, I came up, I f first found this problem because of Anticar and her work uh, with getting medical supplies to the Outer Islands. They were telling me about how kids were starting to have all these crazy diseases and infections and cuts on their feet. And it was only because they didn't have access to s shoes. And they were trying to figure out ways to get new medicines and new machines and bone saws so and I gotta, wheelchairs. And, and I was like, whoa, so I let's just get them Zoris. What, why, why do you care so passionately? What is it that drives you? Because why, you, why do I yeah, care? Why do you care so because much? we have to. There's, there's no option. Our, our generation will not have the luxury of making excuses. We're not going to be able to say, oh yeah, it was the guys before us. We're not going to be able, in say 60 years, when we're the older generation, and we're the ones that are going to have to be giving the speeches and educating the next generation because we've already done our work. Once we've already run our course and done our time, we're going to be held accountable for all of the actions and all of the mistakes for all the generations before us because our grandchildren are going to feel the extremity of all of that ten hundred fold than we are. And well, then they're not going to listen to me saying I try to tell them I try to do this. We have to. There's no there's no ifs, ands, or buts. We have to right now. Well, then we'll put this interview in a time capsule so that down okay. the line they'll know that you did it. I. Unfortunately, we ran out of time, but your story is so awesome, and I'm looking well, forward to more people learning. We definitely need to catch up some more. We'll do a catch up, and, and for sure, I think that there is a place for, for kids like Kai. I don't mean any insult by that, but uh, as influencers, and I think this is a generation, and you make a fine point, you know, there's no excuses. You, have, not. To, you have to do it. And that being said, don't, I don't mean to take your spotlight here, but I need all the help I can get. Okay. Like, there, there is how no do just, shortage. How did, how did they find you? Can they find you on Facebook? Hit me up on or? Instagram. That dude Kai is easy. That dude I'm just Kai. that dude. K -A -I that dude K-A-I. Okay, yeah. that dude Kai. Yeah, hit me Instagram. up and ask me how you can help. We need people all the time uh, that are that want to help. So That's awesome. Thank we you. We appreciate thank all you, the help baby. we get. No, thank That's you, something Kai. to talk about. We'll talk to you next time. Be back.